Hi everybody, this is Trevor from Astro Backyard and in today's video we're going to be looking at your photos on Instagram, your astro photography images. So I'm going to be going over them and telling you what I like, what I don't like, critiquing and reviewing them. And I'll say this right out of the gate, I am no professional, that's for sure. I'm also learning just like you guys. But by reviewing these images together, maybe we can take away uh, some pointers and uh, ways to improve our images. So without further ado, let's get into Instagram and look at some of my favorite shots. Okay, here we go. We are on Instagram. We're going to go through your photos. I've chosen 13 accounts, I believe. To, there was just so many to go through, so many amazing accounts. We'll have to do another video to go through them all. I will say, and this is the case for posting images online on a lot of sites, the compression will kind of take away from the image. Unless you're posting to a gallery site like Flickr or Astrobin, you're gonna get kind of a, a compressed version of your image, and that's definitely the case on Instagram here, so take that with a grain of salt. These, these images that you're gonna see will look better in their full-size form, but I mean, checking these images on your phone as you're swiping through and just relaxing, that's what Instagram's all about, so. Uh, but that's, that's, everyone knows that about Instagram. So let's get out of my account and go on to the first account we're gonna review here. And this is Astro Stace. So she's got a nice puppy that she shares a lot too, which I of course appreciate. But let's look at this photo of the cone nebula that she shared recently. And uh, she mentioned that this is a, a reprocess because she wasn't happy with her original version. Who can relate to that? I think everybody, right? Also, she's a big AstroPixel processor fan. Uh, she's been slightly trying to nudge me in that direction, which may happen in the future, but I thought this image of the Cone Nebula was incredible because I know she's using a small refractor, so this is very wide field, and uh, just the colors, and I, I appreciate the softness of this image and the, the cool blues uh, in contrast against the nice reds and to get the, uh, the Christmas tree cluster in there as well as the Cone Nebula. So if we look at her original version, it's a little more crunchy and noisy, and uh, she softened it up for this one, which I think was a great move. I, I'm a huge fan of, of seeing like soft, glowy stars as opposed to really tight, crunchy ones, but that's a personal preference. On to the next one, this is Alex Mullins from Delaware, Ohio. This one I thought was really cool because I know from personal experience that the Pac-Man Nebula is really tough to shoot in RGB, particularly with uh, a DSLR camera, you really have to stretch the data and in doing so you pull those stars forward too and sometimes you can kind of lose the contrast of the nebula in there but I thought he just did an excellent job. This is so much better than than my first shots of the Pac-Man nebula shooting in RGB but I believe somewhere he mentioned that he was shooting in RGB with the DSLR. Oh it was on the comment he mentioned how the, uh, the addition of an HA filter really helped Hit, uh, move things along so obviously you can you can see he's progressing great uh, and I just thought that uh, that image of the Pac-Man was exceptional so this is Brian Brian Fulda and I, I, I apologize if I uh, mispronounce any names here he's got an excellent gallery a really nice balance like as a whole to see the grid here you can tell he's taken time to really uh, master each one of these photos as best as possible before sharing and this one really stood out, the 1% moon. How many of you guys have ever shot a 1% crescent moon before? It's not, it's, everything has to come together. Uh, you have to have the right conditions, of course, but then you have to find it and it needs to be low to the horizon so you can actually capture it. I, the clouds just made this photo so special with those, the beautiful sunset colors. I love this, that razor sharp crescent moon. So that's absorbing photons the absorbing photons Instagram handle and uh, I just thought that was excellent moving on to Astro Nightscapes in Australia so this is another style of astrophotography star trails it's not something I've actually done myself believe it or not I'm always trying to uh, compensate for the rotation of the earth and not just let it ride but it's, it's a whole new challenge to get a star trail uh, shot like this where you actually have to stack those long exposure images together and getting the right exposure so you don't blow your highlights out. You can actually see some of those star colors and the movement there. And uh, this one was just done so well with the, uh, the silhouetted twisted tree in front. I really love this and I love that you can see the movement of the stars and some of the brighter ones in there and the, the star colors. Love this. Next up we have, this is Stephen Rundle. 
and uh, he's new to astrophotography. And the one that stuck out to me was, uh, cause he just got started last summer, but he actually got a shot of Comet Wurtan in 46P, which Comet photography is a whole different ball of wax. And uh, to finding it's one of the t hardest parts and then properly exposing it to, to get it out and, and tracking. So I thought this photo was excellent because he got so, so much of the um, the outer details of this of this comet. The image is quite noisy as you can see, but sometimes in astrophotography, it depends on the subject matter, what you're trying to accomplish. And obviously he was trying to just to capture as much of the comet as possible. And I think he did a great job there. That's exactly the color and what Comet 46P were tan and looked like. So I thought that was a great shot. Next up, we have Dan Sullivan in Connecticut. He put a link straight to this photo, so I believe this is the one he wanted me to uh, talk about. And it's the Pleiades, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at all that d surrounding dust. Uh, if you saw the photo I took recently with a limited exposure time from the backyard, it didn't have nearly this much dust. And uh, I just thought it was, it was well done. It's perhaps maybe a little too noisy depending on the monitor you're looking on. If it's uh, a little bright, you kind of see some of that background noise, but Otherwise, uh, the rays are sharp. You're seeing those, the different sizes of stars and the cool blues, just loved it. And also, I really like the way he breaks down his gear used and the settings, these separate tabs with the icons. That is so helpful. And I might have to borrow that and start adding that to all my photos, just the way he's done this gear, settings, acquisition, and processing. So handy to include those details. And it's something you could, you know, build beforehand and just copy and paste onto all your new photos. I love that. So, so great job. Dan Sullivan is the handle on Instagram. And then this is uh, Eli. So he's in Belgium. And uh, obviously you can see some incredible images here, uh, including the lunar eclipse there. But I went straight to this Orion Nebula because uh, what I loved about this was not only picking up the faint dust around it and perfectly exposing the core of the Orion Nebula here. You can see the trapezium. It doesn't look flat. A uh, lot of depth to this image. Those super tiny sharp stars and the colors. Look at the contrast of the cool blue of the Running Man against the hot pinks of Orion. Uh, just an excellent shot and look how tiny those stars are. Very sharp and crisp but not overly noisy. Uh, and I can imagine, actually I did check it out on Flickr and it looks even better than it does here in the compressed image on Instagram. Okay, next up we have take to the skies underscore astro is the handle on Instagram. And this is from Australia, very jealous of you Southern Hemisphere guys. And uh, yep, this is a target we can shoot in the Northern Hemisphere. This is the Eagle Nebula. Specifically, he's really showcased well the pillars of creation. I remember the first time capturing the Pillars of Creation and looking at it and just, I was speechless. I, I was talking about it for days. It was, I, cha I changed my profile picture on Facebook to it. Uh, I know you guys can relate to that. So not only can you see, he had great focus here. This is taken with a reflector and you can see the Pillars of Creation, but you can see some of the contrasting star colors, the, the blues and reds. And this is just a Canon 600D. So the T3i, the camera I use, only two hours of exposure time on a Newtonian reflector. And those big reflectors have their challenges uh, as far as stability and focus and all that, but he was able to, to nail it on this one and capture the pillars of creation in the Eagle Nebula. And I thought it was an excellent photo. And you can see the uh, star diffraction spikes from the, um, from the reflector because it's got those, those veins crossing over the mirror. Skywatcher HEQ5 mount too. That's a very familiar sounding setup to me. I thought this was ex excellent. So take to the skies underscore Astro in Australia. Next we have Miroslav Horvat. And out of all the photos, and he's got some really good ones here. So he is in, I can't remember. I, I don't think that it says where he's from. Although I see Southern Hemisphere stuff. Uh, including the L Large Ma Magellanic Cloud. But the photo that stood out to me was this one, because I've shot this region myself and I did not do nearly as good a job as Miroslav did. Um, because, so this is the Saturn region and the butterfly, portion of the Butterfly Nebula, very, very wide field area. But what I loved about this photo was look at the different sizes of stars and the star colors. 
it's so like this section right here you can see small blue young stars and then the larger older red stars in there of course uh, Saturn is so bright it's got a nice glow to it yet the details of the nebula are sharp that is you know that's next level stuff for astrophotography once you master capturing well not master I certainly haven't but you you know how to get these crispy details sharp details of the nebula but then you you ruin your stars or they're too pale or they're not showing correct color or they're just blown out but the stars in this photo were just so well done i love this shot and it made me want to repress <laughs> reprocess my butterfly nebula all over again next up we have astrophotography and i think that's how you say it uh this guy's very cool he has a youtube channel and this is uh razin farsad and uh, he's very active on YouTube and Instagram, so show him some love and follow him and what he's doing. He's in the UK, and I had to show him some love for this one because he used the Astro Backyard HARGB processing tutorial on his image of the California Nebula, which is a great target right now. What I love about this image is how he was able to reduce the stars. They are so tiny and so sharp and really showcase the billowing soft cloud that is the California Nebula. And uh, it's just, it's, it's very soft, it's very natural. And those stars, like I said, are really small. And that's with combining the that HA as a luminance layer on top and using a, a red channel as HA as well. Uh, it's a really great way to process this nebula and he did such a great job. And the framing uh, is nice here too. He's got the, the you know, centered nicely. Great job and a great uh, Instagram page and YouTube channel. Next up we have Adam who is in New York City. I've met Adam at the Cherry Spring Star Party and at Neef because it's right around the corner from him in New Jersey. And this guy works in downtown Manhattan during the day and then does astrophotography at night. Can you even believe that? What excuse do you have for your light pollution when you're not shooting in New York City? So he's got it as bad as it gets yet he's collecting these images uh, like this. And I will say some of these might be from uh, darker skies than the backyard, but the majority of these he's taking from his backyard, which is horribly light polluted. But I know that a lot of these images are taken from New York City. I thought this image of the lagoon in Triffid was well done, the sharp stars, the color, so soft, beautiful region and beautiful, beautifully framed. And he's using very modest equipment too. I believe this was the Orion Sirius or the Atlas mount, which I know a lot of you guys are using. So follow Adam at Spaced Out Picks on Instagram. Just an incredible guy. Uh, I can't wait to see him in a few weeks at Neef. Another really cool guy, Astro Newton. So this is Brent Newton. Again, very, very active on Facebook specifically. Um, and what an incredible shot of the lunar eclipse that we had back in January. A composition where he actually shows Earth's shadows movement over the moon and uh, just such a creative way to, to showcase this event. He obviously captured it from start to finish and I just thought this was so interesting to see the shape of the Earth's shadow in there and that's kind of his specialty. He's, his composition is, is excellent. Uh, dedication. I know he's out all the time. This guy lives and breathes astrophotography. So follow Astro Newton in Wichita, Kansas. Brent Newton, great job, buddy. And uh, keep up the great work. This is Samara. I know there's women in this hobby are rather rare. So you saw Stacy at the beginning and then Samara who too is, I've seen her around. And check out this image of the pinwheel galaxy uh, M101. That is some serious detail. I'm not sure where she's shooting from. I assume it's dark skies to get data this great or or she's just really working for it. Uh, backyard Observatory in Ohio, so it could be dark depending on how far out of the city she is, but the, just the p absolutely perfect colors in my book for how the pinwheel galaxy should look with the, the, the warmer yellow and orange in the center coming out to the cool blues and with lots of H-alpha pinks in there. Just really amazing image of, of M101 that blows anything I've ever done on it uh, out of the water. It looks like she's shooting Hyperstar, so gotta get on that. And then that was it, so we're back to me again. So I urge you to share your photos on Instagram. It's a great way to quickly keep up to date with, uh, keep a pulse on the hobby, see what others are doing, get inspired. Uh, I hope you follow some of the, the people that I've showcased because uh, it takes 
take some guts to share your images, especially if you're just starting out when people can are quick to uh, to judge your images, but you never know what conditions they're shooting in which, which equipment, and that's what it's all about for me. I, I prefer, the fun of this hobby for me is actually working for it, building your own kit, seeing progress, that's the fun. Not jumping straight to downloading data from uh, a remote observatory, just processing. Like you might as well be processing Hubble data. Um, and that's fun for processing, but to, to work for it and to capture your own stuff from the backyard, that's obviously what, what I'm all about. I hope you enjoyed looking at some of these images and Instagram accounts as much as I have. It's really inspiring to, to go through this stuff and it gives you new ideas and new perspectives and think about new compositions and ways to shoot objects. And It's inspiring to see some of the imaging conditions some of these photos are shot in. I mean, stuff from New York City and outside Chicago and these big light polluted places. So that's really inspiring for anyone that's wants to get into this hobby but thinks they don't live in the right location and actually take decent deep sky images. Next time I'll try to do a better job of diversifying the types of images, some more nightscape, landscape style astrophotography images in the Milky Way. I love that kind of stuff. So I want to go through some of those accounts too. There's a few that come to mind but I didn't want to go through them on the video because they didn't ask me to yet. So I hope you enjoyed the video and be sure to follow the accounts that uh, I shared in the video to show them some love, show them that you appreciate their work. And until next time, I hope you get outside and take some astrophotography images in your own backyard, wherever that may be.